Hello, and welcome to Django CMS 101, The User's Guide. I'm Lisa King of Imaginary Landscape, and today I will be sharing with you the basics of this very popular content management system from the user's perspective. So, if you're the one who's responsible for adding, arranging, and publishing content on your Django CMS website, and find yourself not quite sure how to go about it, welcome. You're in the right place. The first thing to note is that the tool itself is something of a chameleon. How it will appear to you will depend a lot on the design and configuration of your own site. I'm going to keep this overview general and provide you sufficient guidance to allow you to map what I'm talking about back to your own instance. If you find you need more specific help navigating your own installation, please drop us a line at cms at imagescape.com. We'd be happy to work on custom training or documentation for you. It's important to note also that for this demonstration, we're looking at Django CMS version 3.2.3. .3. The tool is under steady development, and if you're running a different version than this, you might notice some differences though the basic functionality remains pretty consistent. Again, if there's something you can't work out, let us know and we'll see what we can do to clarify. Okay, so let's get started. With Django CMS, you can access content management from anywhere on the site. All you need to do is log in. If the design of your site does not provide a login form, as ours does not, you can always access the CMS by appending question mark edit to the URL. So, click in the browser's URL bar, type question mark edit at the end of the URL, hit return. That will bring up the Django CMS toolbar, and if you're not logged in, it will give you the opportunity to do so. If appending parameters to the URL is a little too cryptic for you or your staff, you might, as a simple shortcut, add a discrete staff link that does the appending for you. Okay, so let's log in. If you don't know your login and password, you'll need to get that from your system administrator. Once you are logged in, you should see a number of options appear in the CMS toolbar. Look in particular for this page menu. If you don't see that, then your user has not been granted permissions needed to work in the CMS. And again, you'll need to talk to your system administrator about getting your permissions straight. So let's look at the toolbar. These items are somewhat customizable by site and may look different for you than what you're seeing here, but don't let that throw you. Starting at the left, the Django CMS logo links back to your homepage. And if you hover over it, will display the version of the CMS that you're running. The item immediately to the right of the Django CMS logo by default will display your site name. We've configured it to say apps instead because it's shorter and makes more sense to us as this menu contains links to various site management tools. So apps or your site name or whatever you have chosen to display there. This menu provides links to tools that are not page specific, most notably Pages, which opens the split screen view and presents the site tree, which allows you to manage the organization of your site's CMS pages. Next in the toolbar, the page menu lists options that will affect the page that you are currently browsing. History is a log of the changes this page has gone through and may not display if your site is not configured to use it. Language lets you switch between language views of the current page if the site is configured to be multilingual, which this one is not, so it's only showing the one language option. The buttons on the right end of the toolbar have evolved over the last several releases of the CMS and are likely to continue to do so, so it might look a little different, but the basic functionality remains the same. Here we have the Create button, 
which is a new addition that streamlines the path to create new content. This is also where you'll find the Publish button, which will publish the page that you are currently browsing. Here is also the means to navigate various views of the page, switching between structure and content, switching to the live or published view, and back to the draft or edit mode. A word about page versions. In Django CMS, there can be two versions of any given page, the published and the unpublished. When you make a change to a page, or when you make a new page, that version of the page is not visible to the browsing public until you choose to make it so by publishing it. That version of the new or edited page that is not yet published is sometimes referred to as draft, and the environment in which you make changes is the draft or edit mode. So, clicking on View Published will show you the live version of your page, and you'll see the menu is much simplified in this view. Then, clicking on Edit will return you to the draft or unpublished view, where you will be able to make changes. In edit mode, if you move your cursor over the page, you'll see it turns into an edit flag when you're over content that is editable through the CMS. Double clicking there will open an edit window. You make a change. Save. And there you see it. But, as I said, it is still not visible to the public. And clicking View Published, you'll see the live version is unchanged. If you go back to Edit Mode and click Publish Changes, that will take the draft version live and switch you to the published view. So, your site is made up of pages. Those pages can have published and unpublished versions. The published version can be seen by the public. The unpublished version is only accessible to users who log in with the appropriate permissions. The content of the page that is set up to be editable becomes clickable in edit mode, allowing you to make your changes right there. Going back into edit mode, I want to touch on one last thing, and that is dynamic site navigation, the links you provide for users to navigate your site. Your template can be configured so that the navigation automatically reflects the organization of your pages so that you don't have to maintain those links manually as pages get added and changed. And you can choose whether or not to include your page in the navigation at all. For example, if you click on resources, you go to the resources page. If you don't want this link to show up in the navigation, go under the page menu. And remember, the tools under the page menu affect the page you are currently browsing. Select hide in navigation. And the link goes away. The page itself remains, but the link to it no longer appears in the navigation. And if you go back under the page menu, select display in navigation, the link returns. As with changes to content, changes to navigation must be published before they are visible to the general public. I hope this tutorial on basic features has helped you feel a little more at home with Django CMS. This is, of course, just the beginning. There's plenty more to explore, and I look forward to going into more detail in future videos. Again, this is Lisa King of Imaginary Landscape, and it has been my pleasure.